In this video, we're going to be talking about alternative refrigeration methods. So far, we've talked about vapor compression refrigeration, but there's others we need to discuss as well, because you will occasionally come across these in refrigeration. Expendable refrigeration systems are number one. An expendable refrigeration system, which is sometimes called an open cycle refrigeration system, in which the refrigerant is discarded after it's evaporated. One variation of expendable refrigeration is liquid nitrogen sprayed directly into a conditioned space. As the nitrogen evaporates, it absorbs heat from the space and is then vented to the atmosphere. Liquid nitrogen is stored under high pressure in an insulated cylinder inside the conditioned space. A control box is connected to a temperature sensing element and then to a liquid control valve. When the temperature in the conditioned space rises above the cut-in temperature, the control box operates the liquid control valve. The pressure of the liquid nitrogen drops as it passes through the restriction in the valve. As the liquid nitrogen is forced out through the spray nozzle, it la rapidly evaporates into the low-pressure nitrogen vapor, absorbing heat in the air. Since liquid nitrogen evaporates at negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit at atmospheric pressure, it is well suited for shipping frozen food. Temperature may be kept as low as desired, usually about negative 20 degrees. An advantage to expandable refrigeration systems is that liquid nitrogen is their ability to operate without a power source. They also require very little maintenance. This is just an example of a liquid nitrogen um, container. Okay, you have conditioned space, you have spray nozzles, a nitrogen tank, and a control box with temperature sensing elements. Now, one of the problems with liquid nitrogen, and you've got to be very aware of this when you service the system, you cannot breathe nitri in a nitrogen environment. If you walk into one of these environments or one of these environments is being used with live animals, or someone's thinking about using it with anything living, this is not the environment you want the, to be in. Okay, so this is only for pre-frozen food or in process refrigeration where frozen food happens. Nitrogen cannot be used with anything living. Dry ice refrigeration is another thing. Dry ice is carbon dioxide frozen solid. It's pressed into various sizes and shapes, typically blocks or slabs. As dry ice absorbs heat, it changes from a solid to a vapor. It does not go through a liquid state. The process of solid changing directly, a solid directly from a solid to a vapor is called sublimination. At atmospheric pressure, solid carbon dioxide subliminates at negative 109 degrees. Okay, this again is used to ship frozen food. You have a frozen food container, you have insulation around it, you have frozen food packages, and then you have slabs of dry ice or bags of dry ice that is in the container with it. There's another process of, train, of you, refrigeration called thermoelectric refrigeration. You see this very heavily in boats, um, RVs, and anything with a small um, cooler type thing where you need low, low energy usage, okay? We use the movement of electrons for this type of refrigeration. Heat is transferred on a subatomic level using semiconductor devices. A French physicist discovered that when current was passed through the junction of two dissimilar metals, heat was absorbed in one part of the junction and moved to the other part. This has come to be known as the Peltier effect, which is the basis of modern thermoelectric refrigeration. Electrical energy, rather than a refrigerant, serves as the heat transfer medium. Thermoelectric refrigeration requires none of the conventional equipment necessary in a mechanical compression system. So again, these systems are relatively lightweight. Sometimes you find them in coolers that you could plug into your car or boat cigarette lighter. There's no compressors, evaporators, condensers, or metering devices. There's no moving parts because the cooling process is performed by, by semiconductors, solid state components. So this is just one example, okay? By You have a cool surface and a hot surface. You have N-type material and P-type material, which is all what semiconductors are made out of. 
okay and by reversing the current flow with using a DC power source you can either be heating a heating an area or cooling an area another way to provide refrigeration is by using vortex tubes vortex tubes provide cold air without any refrigerant or moving parts compressed air is fed into a vortex tube which directs the airflow in a certain manner. Hot air leaves one outlet in the tube and cold air leaves the other outlet. Okay, so we pull compressed air in and because of the make of the tubes, we separate the hot and the cold air. And we, re we reject the hot air to where we don't want it and we put the cold air where we do want it. Okay, we also see these used in vests. Okay, compressed air lines, okay, control valve, we have a vortex tube. Okay, so this is like in a cooling jacket. Refrigerant jet systems use waste heat to help drive refrigerant from the evaporator to condenser. Steam jet systems use high pressure steam to siphon off water vapor inside the evaporator. The resulting drop in pressure increases evaporation, which cools the remaining water in the evaporator. This is an example of a jet system. Okay, we have steam line in, we have a steam nozzle. Okay, we use the steam and the heat to create um, cooled, basically it's a chiller. Okay, without all the compressors and everything, but you have to have a steam source. The Stirling refrigeration cycle converts mechanical energy into heat energy. Okay, a simple Stirling refrigeration system uses a cylinder with two pistons, a stationary regenerator, and a heat exchanger. As the pistons move, they transfer heat by compressing and expanding a gas, usually helium. Okay, so again, by using the expanding and contracting with the pistons, we all of a sudden have a hot area and a cold area. So as the piston drives in, okay, we're pushing the heat out of the heat exchanger. As the stroke is even, we're exchanging it. Then as the cold piston pushes out, we're now circulating the cold. As the piston pushes in, we're circulating the heat. You used to see these very heavily in areas where they didn't have a lot of electricity, but you could do this with a steam engine or a regular, any, any engine with a pulley. Okay, it allowed us to have refrigeration in places we didn't normally, we didn't have good power coming to it. So most often right now, the ones that are used the most is the dry, is the dry ice, the nitrogen, and with smaller refrigeration needs, we use the semiconductors.